Hi, I'm Pat Keown, a Senior Research Analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper. I'm here to speak to you about the fund flows activity for the week ended Wednesday, April 18th. We'll start this week's report by taking a quick look at the market activity for the week. It was a good week for the equity indices as both the S&P 500 index and the Dow Jones Industrial Average were up over 2%. Uh, the, the indices were driven by optimism over the start of Q1 corporate earnings season. Estimates, estimates indicate that the S&P 500 companies are expected to, to grow earnings by greater than 17% for the quarter, which would be its highest level since 2011. If, if actual earnings meet or even exceed uh, the expectations, it will go a long way towards alleviating the street's fears about uh, stock fundamentals not supporting the current valuation of the market. Let's turn our attention back now to the fund flows activity. We'll start by taking a, a look at our macro fund groups, starting with uh, equity mutual funds. So $1 billion in net outflows this week. Taxable bond funds took in $2.4 billion in net new money. Muni bond funds saw $454 million leave. And money market funds had big outflows this week. They had about $35 billion leave their coffers. We'll, we'll take a closer look at each one of the, uh, the asset groups now, starting with our equity mutual funds. As we said, $1 billion in net outflows last week. It was their fourth straight week of net outflows. The long-term trend continues as uh, non-domestic equity funds take in net new money, $472 million this week, and domestic equity funds see money leave, about $1.5 billion this week. Taking a little more granular look at each uh, side there, uh, the largest net inflows for non-domestic equity funds belong to emerging market funds, which took in roughly $500 million in new, net new money, while for domestic equity funds, it was the equity income products, which had the largest net outflows of just about $800 million for the week. We'll move on now to our equity ETF group. Uh, net inflows last week for this group, they took in about $5.6 billion. It was their second straight weekly net inflow. Uh, the main drivers of this were PowerShares QQQ, which had net inflows of roughly $1.9 billion. iShares Russell 2000 took in about $800 million in net new money. And uh, on the other side of the ledger, we see the iShares Edge MSCI USA Momentum product with net outflows of just about $400 million. Let's move on to our taxable bond fund peer groups now, starting with mutual funds. Net inflows for this group last week as well, about $2.4 billion. As the chart indicates, it was driven by high yield funds. Uh, that which took in $1.8 billion for the week. This was the ninth largest ever net inflow for high yield funds, and its largest since December 2016. It bears watching if this is a reversal in trend or a one-time thing, as the high yield group has had net outflows for each of the last six quarters prior to Q2 2018, during which time they've seen their coffers shrink by about $40 billion. Let's move on to the, to the ETF side of taxable bonds now. Uh, net inflows list uh, excuse me, net inflows last week for this group as well, about $3.9 billion in net new money. It was their fourth straight week of net inflows. Uh, leading the way were the Spider Bloomberg Barclays high yield product, high yield again, with about $800 million in net new money, uh, followed by iShares Core U.S. aggregate product with about $600 million in, in net money coming in. And lastly, we see iShares iBox dollar investment grade corporate product with net outflows of about $300 million. We'll move on to our municipal bond fund group now. Uh, net outflows for this group last week, about $450 million left their coffers. It was a third straight weekly net outflow. Uh, the big culprits this week were short muni debt funds and short intermediate muni debt funds, which saw about $340 million and $60 million leave, respectively. Our last group to take a look at is money market funds. Uh, big outflows here, as we mentioned previously, almost $35 billion leaving their coffers. It was uh, every, every one of the peer groups saw money leave, and it was led by the institutional U.S. Treasury money market products and the institutional U.S. government money market products, which saw uh, just over $13 billion and just over $12 billion leave, respectively. Well, that wraps up this week's report. If you'd like to take a closer look at the data for yourself, please go to our website at www.lipperusfundflows.com. And please join us here again next week where another one of our analysts will be speaking about that week's fun flows activity.